welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am rocking a party ponytail and we are going to be making some juicy keto meatloaf. A couple of weeks ago, I made Cody some homemade meatloaf and it was absolutely incredible, but it was definitely not low in carbs. So today, I wanted to share a delicious, juicy, keto meatloaf recipe that will rock your taste buds. This is yet another simple recipe. That's the kind of recipes I like to share. So without further ado, let's make us a keto meatloaf. First things first, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Up next, you're gonna need to grab yourself a big old mixing bowl to mix your meatloaf together. I have been desperately needing to buy a big old mixing bowl, like the ones I grew up with at home were these big metal bowls, and I have yet to buy one. So for now, we just have like a medium sized mixing bowl. I would recommend a large mixing bowl just so it's a little bit easier to mix together. This recipe is incredibly easy, like I mentioned. We're basically going to dump all of our ingredients into our large mixing bowl, mix it together gently, form it into a loaf, and throw it in the oven. Dinner doesn't get much easier than this. First up, you're gonna need two pounds of ground beef. I had to weigh mine out because they only had huge packs at the grocery store. So we're just gonna add that beef into my mixing bowl. Crack in one egg. Up next, I'm gonna add in a half of a cup of super fine almond flour. One fourth of a cup of heavy cream. Two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Still can't say Worcestershire sauce, but we're trying. So two tablespoons. Up next, I'm going to add in one teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate because that's what I do. Now I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of salt and pepper. Up next, I'm gonna add in a half of a teaspoon of thyme. And the final ingredient in this meatloaf, I'm gonna add in a half of a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Now that we've added all of our ingredients into our mixing bowl, you're gonna wanna roll up your sleeves, use your God-given utensils, and we're just going to gently mix together all of the ingredients in this meatloaf. I got my meatloaf mixture fully combined. So what I did was I lined a cookie sheet with some non-stick aluminum foil. This stuff is the best. I love, love, love this stuff. Nothing sticks to it. So what we're going to do is just take our meatloaf, dump it onto our foil, and form us a loaf. meatloaf loafed and I'm about to pop it in the 350 degree oven for 40 minutes and then we're gonna pull it out add our glaze and then stick it back in the oven to finish so here we go I'll see y'all in 40 minutes I just put oh the pan just popped and that just scared the poop out of me who Anyways, I just popped the meatloaf in the oven and I turned around and realized the onion I went to the grocery store for today, I forgot to put it in the meatloaf. I love an onion in my meatloaf. You either love onion or you don't in your meatloaf. I do. Typically, I would dice up about half of a yellow onion and mix that into my meatloaf as well, but I forgot it. So today we're having a onionless meatloaf. But if you like onion, feel free to add a little bit of onion to your meatloaf. All right, there's that. I will see you when that is done. <laughs> it has now been 40 minutes and I just pulled the meatloaf out of the oven. There was a good bit of grease on the pan, so I just dumped some of that into the trash. But now we're gonna go ahead and add our glaze. 
don't know about y'all, but for me, meatloaf just isn't the same if it isn't topped with ketchup. So today, I'm gonna be using this Alterna Sweets Classic Tomato Ketchup. It has one net carb per one tablespoon. I'm gonna add one fourth of a cup of this over the top of my meatloaf, and it's gonna go back in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it reaches an internal temperature of 160 degrees, indicating that it is completely done and it'll get all nice and caramelized and kind of cook into that meat and it is so so good so let's go add this on top quick side note if you don't want to order a specialty ketchup online you can find this heinz no sugar added tomato ketchup at your local grocery store and it has one gram of carb per one tablespoon as well so this is just another option if you want to put ketchup on your meatloaf I used one of these little silicone brush doohickeys. I don't know the actual name, but I just used that to spread the one fourth of a cup of ketchup over the top of the meatloaf. Time to pop it back into our 350 degree oven. The meatloaf was in the oven for a total of 60 minutes, and then I pulled it out and let it rest for about 10 minutes. And y'all, we have our keto meatloaf ready to be sliced up and eaten. This would be perfect to be served alongside some mashed cauliflower, maybe some green beans, but this looks delicious. Well guys, I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel down below if you haven't done so, and I will see y'all again real soon with another video. Hey y'all, bye y'all. <laughs> he just got home from work, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye!